Welcome to Low Headroom. Today we're going to build a finger jointed pine cabinet uh, for our 5E3 chassis. I've been meaning to do this for some time. First thing we're going to do is put a dado blade. You're going to need a dado blade for this particular activity and we're going to install this in our table saw. So a dado blade cuts uh, gaps uh, instead of just uh, slight cuts so it cuts a wider cut so that we can uh, make our finger jointed uh, pieces lock together. Um, this is an unusual dado blade. It's an adjustable one. Uh, it's called a wobble wheel. I do have a stack dado blade that I just purchased but if I can take it back to the store and save $70 I'm gonna do that. After much pain and heartache we have achieved the following. We have installed our dado blade, our stack dado blade and I had to modify the throat fret plate crudely uh, so that it would fit the uh, half inch uh, width of the stacked dado. All right, the next thing I've done is I've modified my uh, miter here and I've put two holes in the plastic so that I could screw this piece of wood on. Okay, so I've just taken a scrap piece of wood, roughly uh, that will reach the end of the table here. And what we're going to do here is, with the modified throat plate here, we're just going to come here, see if we can get a good cut, and that will be the first part of our jig. So let's see if we uh, run into disaster or not. Now one pivotal thing I forgot to do is actually get the dado at the proper height. So what we're going to want is the dado blade to line up exactly with the height of the board we're working with. We've got our dado blade at the right height. Now comes the part that most people don't explain. We've got to create a rod here that will fit in this. So what I'm going to have to do is just measure the width here, mark the width here, and cut with on my normal blade. So we're going to have to put the normal blade back on. I might do this with my chop saw, actually. All right, yeah. So basically, I've got to get a piece of wood that fits in here from this particular board. Okay, I'm also using my tape measure to just ensure that I'm at one half inches and one half inches here. Here's the chop saw station. I'm now going to cut this on the marked line. piece. Not sure why it broke off, but this should suffice. So what we're going to do now is go see if that fits in our groove. Okay, I now have a peg that fits quite well. You can see, I'm going to glue it in here and let it dry for a few minutes. Okay, now we've glued it in. So the next step is just going to wait be to wait for it to dry. Now if you have a longer piece from the same piece that's the exact width, collect that as well. We're going to need it. So basically you can see that this is only half of the piece that I cut. I'm going to go get the other half because we're going to have to use it as a spacer. And I'll show you in a little bit. Alright, I got my spacer. So this is going to help us in the future cut the box joint. Uh, and I'll show you. I'm then going to take my spacer, which I have right here. And I'm going to put it next to my other little block. And I'm going to line it up right next to the blade. I mean, I want it nice and square. So against the miter gauge, I'm going to use this old school clamp from my grandfather. Make sure that it's really well aligned. So if that's where I want it, I'm going to keep the clamp there. Screw, screw it in to its final position. This side. It looks pretty good. I think that's going to work. Alright, I'm going to use this test piece of board. Just to get the feel for this, since it's my first time doing it. And I can go ahead and clamp these boards together. So, let's go ahead and start cutting. Alright. First cut, here we go. Now we take this. Put it over here. rest of this board and then we'll move on to the next. Alright, so the uh, this board we're going to have to do something a little bit different. We're going to have to use the first board as a spacer. I finished the board like this. What I want to do is turn it around like this. So there, it's my first cut. I use it as a spacer. Okay. 
Now I take my first board away and make my first cut. Now I'm going to do the same thing I did before. All the way down. I recommend sunglasses or safety goggles of any sort. Alright, so after many hours of fine tuning, we have a very nice box showing, almost perfect. I think it will work. Uh, this is scrap wood. My tip to you would be practice, practice, practice on a board you don't care about until you get the result you want. Then move on to your work, otherwise it's going to cost you money. The spacer you cut is pivotal, so after you cut it, make sure it fits into a slot. right? Make sure that it's not too wide and that there's not too much play. And mark it with marker once you've done it. This is the hardest piece that people don't talk about. Alright, it's getting late as you can see. So now it's time to cut the first boards. We're doing two 16.5 inch pieces. I think I'm just going to go ahead and make them a 17. It'll be a little bit bigger than a 5E3 cab. Do 17, 17, 20, and 20. So I'm going to go ahead and mark those and saw those now. Alright, so we finished this piece last night. So you will recall that the next step would be to flip it over backwards. Use that first 20 inch piece here. Now that that spacer has done its job, we'll get a clamp. Now that that notch is cut, we'll continue the way that we have been. Alright, there it is. Definitely not perfect, but I think we can work with that. Go ahead and continue the process. Okay, that looks good. Alright, it's coming along. Get this piece attached and get everything at a nice right angle. Then we'll glue it together and possibly stain it while it's drying. Alright, so I know that this corner, this needs to match this corner. So this corner needs to start with an open gap. All right, let's see if this fits. Now we will begin the gluing. We'll put a little bit here. Now I've got a little paintbrush. All right, so there you have it. I've uh, just made sure everything's square and clamped together and glued, and for a first try, it's not bad at all. So now we'll just wait for it to dry. We might even apply some stain while we're waiting for it to dry. As another day fades to black, you can see that the cabinet's really coming along. I, I didn't have a router bit, so I did the best I could with the sander here, and I think it looks good enough. I really do. Um, it's very solid, very solid. So the next thing we're going to do is apply a light coat of stain um, and then work on the cleats and all that good stuff. Okay, it's another night here. Let me show you briefly what I've done. I've got a line drawn right here. That's um, 2.5 inches with a curve I engineered myself and it's 12.25 inches inside of a 20 inch board. So we're gonna go ahead and cut that with our favorite tool, everyone's favorite tool. Here we go. Okay, that actually looks pretty good. 
I think that's good enough for the first cabinet that I have ever made. Oh yeah. That looks really good. First coat is good to go. Um, I'm having some trouble here where I think the adhesive was, so we'll see if we can get that. Otherwise, we might have to sand it a little more. But I mean, it's starting to look really nice. All right, day number, I don't know what day it is. You can see that the exterior is looking pretty good. I'm starting to put some clear coat on top of it to try to make it shiny. That's where we are right now. We're clear coating it and fast drying it. We're trying not to breathe in, or trying to breathe in as many fumes as we can. The glossiness is coming along. I want this thing to be extra glossy here. Next thing we have to do is create the cleats to hold the speaker baffle and cut the speaker baffle to size. That's what we're gonna do next. All right, another fine day. Today we're gonna cut the baffle. I found it easier just to trace the baffle out with this silver marker. The cabinet has come out great. It looks kind of antique -y. weathered a little bit. It's got, it's just nice looking. It really came out better than I, I thought it could have. I have this uh, cheap pine uh, furring strip for the cleats and the fascia board. Alright, so those framing pieces, these three, be screwed in from underneath and on the sides, and the baffle board will rest on those. We have framed the baffle, and now we're going to spray it with black spray paint. While that's drying, we're now going to cut the fascia board to the appropriate length. Alright, the fascia boards are done. Now it's time to do some staining of the fascia boards, the bottom of the cabinet, and the top of the cabinet while we wait for that baffle to dry. Okay, to be truthful, a lot of my files corrupted when I finished the amplifier and uh, I wasn't able to get all the footage. But luckily, uh, and I'm looking at the positive side of this, the amp rattled a little bit when I played a G major or G minor. So what I'm doing now is reinforcing some of the um, cleats uh, and baffle strips with glue so that they don't have the opportunity to rattle. I'm also going to make the grill cloth more taut. Now I just wanted to show you what the cabinet came out as. It's uh, I'm very happy with it. Uh, the chassis is in. The two back panels are attached and all this was done with a sander not a router and I think it just gives it a very rustic feel though it was more time consuming. I'll be looking into getting a router table in the future. So this is the cabinet and I'll show you what we're doing right now. This is the speaker baffle board and what I'm going to do is the strips were kind of crudely screwed to the board and I believe that was the source of the rattle. So what I'm going to do is clamp and glue each of the uh, baffle strips on there and let them dry with clamps in the sun. Alright, we have the strips uh, clamped to the baffle and we're going to just wait for that to dry and uh, touch it up with paint if we need to and uh, then reinsert it into the cabinet and uh, screw the baffle in and we should be good to go. Put some cloth on it. We are also adding one more cleat strip up here so that we can screw into four cleats instead of just three. So now we just wait for it to dry and we reassemble it as well as put the grill cloth on. All right, the baffle board is ready to go. It's dry enough to insert into the cabinet. So uh, I'm gonna check the cabinet now to make sure that top cleat is dry. And then we're gonna go ahead and screw in the baffle board and install the fascia pieces. We are almost done.
finally we have made it to the finish line. Real cloth is in. Everything looks good. We're about to give it a little bit of a test run. And uh, yeah, overall very pleased with it. Let's have a closer look. This is what I would like to do, start building amplifiers like this. We will be playing to the woods as our audience. Thank you. 